Okay. We're good. So we're going to be talking about African empires. So just to like, yeah, okay. So the book takes place in Dakar, Senegal. So this is just like
So next was the Song Gai Empire. It was one of the largest Islamic empires in history. Uh, upper classes in society converted to Islam, while lower classes often continued to follow traditional religions. So uh, the economy was based on the clan system. So the clan was uh, a, a person belonged to decided their occupation. So lower class were metal workers, fishermen, and carpenters. Uh, at the top were noblemen and direct descendants of the original Sangai people, followed by freemen and traders. Okay, now historical highlights of Sangai. <laughs> Uh, so, um, um, okay, so I'm just gonna, okay, so we already went through like the empires, so I'm just gonna focus on the independence. Okay. So, 1960 June, Senegal becomes independent as part of the Mali Federation. In 1960 August, uh, Senegal pulls out of the Mali Federation, becomes se a separate republic with Leopold Senghor as president. Uh, 1962 attempted coup led by Prime Minister Mamadou Dia. Dia is imprisoned until 1974. Uh, 1963, there's the first constitution draw, drawn up. Uh, in 1966, the Senghor Senegalese Pro Progressive Union uh, and becomes country's sole political party. In 1978, three party political system introduced. Okay. Um, <laughs> the book wasn't published after 19, that. Actually, okay. 1979 well, this is the book. Is the independence of Senegal. That's yeah. all I found for it. 1979. This is great. So you're good. I, and then I didn't find much information. Like, okay, but all of that stuff on the will of society and what we need to talk about. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so like the Jolof Empire, like yeah. society. Jolof. Okay, it's, it's yeah, no, 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 it's just okay. those two that I found were important, that's okay. why. I didn't really, I had to mention the other ones because it's like what created. Yes, which I would argue is important as well. So, yeah. so, and then the independence, I, I didn't really know, okay. How did the African empires mainly focus on Jalaf and Sangai play a role in shaping modern Senegal? So the one portrayed in the novel, and then think of terms of social classes, women, and religion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so maybe uh, we can just shape our question a little bit. Okay. I understand it. So, this idea of who is representative of modern Senegal society. Now that you've learned a little bit about the history, okay, tell me what is going on in Senegal during this time in regards to the change that has occurred. How has society? You want to think about it? Like think of it in terms of that timeline, like. What was society like before, and how has it changed? Okay, well, Senegal yeah. is mentioned several times. So, at what point is Senegal like is the one in the? It was book? part of all the empires. That, that's what I'm trying to get you to get. That's what I'm asking you to. Her four, look at. her four months. Sorry? No, no. Isn't the book about hmm. the whole story? No, 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 she no, means no, no. what it's empire like are they in right now when they're the book is described, and oh, okay. how is that value like being portrayed? Yes. Okay, so the issue is, is that we, this is not our society, right? And it's, we don't know the history of this world, this, this country either. And so we have to understand a little bit of the history and then a little bit in terms of how it's changed to become the modern Senegal that we know in this book so that we can really validly assess certain conflicts which are going on in the book. Okay? Yeah. So like from before we like you discussed how uh, gold was a trade and how that created like uh, like people to become rich and stuff. So in the Jolof uh, Empire, like there was a there was a segregated hierarchy, yeah. and that shows that the like we can see that in the book through lady mother-in-law that wants the, her daughter to get married so she could jump uh, social class and she could be in the same level as Hamatulaye and her husband. So we see that there's a huge se or not a huge segregated there's just segregated social classes. And that is depicted through Jolof's empire. Okay, good. Keep going. Yes? I thought that you couldn't jump. So she's not. She's no, not she said women to... can't marry upwards. Not marry upwards. Their children did not inherit the father's superior. Yeah. So not marry upwards. And their children oh. inherit the father's superior. So what's that? Does that make everyone just go down and so on? Women could not marry upwards. I don't know. 
if no one can move up. If women can't marry upwards, why would the kids ever have a father? If they can't. And the kids can't move up. Who's going up? No, but there'd never be a situation where the kids can't move up because the women can't marry up. Right? You see, you see what I mean? Sense. Yeah. Are you sure this is right? <laughs> they can't be mutually inclusive. I don't know about that. I, I think she can marry anyone. I think a woman can. Like in the book, the pe different people come. No, like, okay, so we're, okay, we're looking at like old society, okay? And old society says that we stay within the caste. Maybe that's what it's talking about. I think Jalas is way before the book. That's I understand. That's what I'm talking about. Like early, early, like in history, right? Caste systems stayed at, okay? You could not move up or down. You stayed in your caste, okay? And so, for example, um, but then over time, you know how, like, caste hierarchies change, right? Especially because France had moved in, okay? And, and at the same time, you have these um, Islamic forces in terms of religion, moving in. Do we see that? So it's kind of a mixture of African society, like African tradition, like Wolof society tradition, mixed with French colonialism, mixed with Islam. Does that make sense? Go. Are there more presentations on like the history and stuff? No. no. Did we miss the Moors? Like, There's too early. Okay. Yes. Go. Um, well, when you're talking about most of the, like the, the Islamic uh, culture, well, in the Shanghai uh, Empire, you discussed how the people that were in the higher class were mostly Muslims. I think that's what you said because of the trade and, and gold and stuff. So we see that that in Hamatulay's class, they were mostly Muslims. Her last name, like Asatu Ba, she was in a class lower, but she still had that same education. So we see that that last name represents the, the Islamic culture, same as Hamatulay and stuff. So. Okay. We also remember Aisatu. What is, what, according to rule of society, what class which is she in? Goldsmith. Yeah, she's a goldsmith, right? And that's why her mother in law never, what is Auntie Nabu, right? Nabu, yeah. yeah. She doesn't want her to marry Madu, Madu Fall. Because he's higher. Because he's higher. Because she is from like old traditional. Society, do you see that? However, Aisha too has removed herself from that old way of thinking through education. Do we see this? She has attended a French school that really surpasses all of those perhaps old traditional hierarchies that will of society dictated. And therefore, this new tradition, the, the, the new society changing, doesn't want to kind of follow those old hierarchical system. And so Madu Fall marries Aisatu. Okay? Even though there is great um, discord in his family for it. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. So we see that, yes, on a very like um, shallow level, the there are conflicts because mother-in-law doesn't approve with new daughter-in-law, right? But when you look further, the conflicts go much deeper because it becomes historically based. It becomes politically based as well. Do you see this? Yes. Well, Asa too wasn't, uh, like, the only reason she wasn't in the same social class as Hama today is because of her father. Yes. But she had the same education, so she was supposed, or she is al allowed, in a sense, to go up a uh, class. Because and, and again, it's because times are changing, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. It's because times are changing, and therefore, she, yes, normally, old society would have dictated that she's no, she can't get out of her class. However, with the invasion of France, and, so, and now suddenly she's allowed education that she wasn't allowed before, she has kind of surpassed and gotten out of that hierarchy. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, um, I know we didn't talk that much about independence, but 
Uh, how does the newfound independence of Senegal influence the characters in the plot? So think of like feminism and how does it influence It's a good question. It's a good question. I feel like it's exactly what you just said. Yeah, yeah, like, let's say if we take Isa too, and how her mom did one thing, maybe. Mario's mom. Yeah. So, because he was of a higher class, it's the idea of like independence and like new ways of thinking coming into it. And definitely as feminism evolved in the two, where she's like, no, if I like, if I love him, I can marry him. It's not because of my mom's thing. Okay, keep going. I think there's more, and I think there's also kind of interesting way of contradiction in this independence and in relation to feminism as well. Yeah. Well, okay. So like, if we want to talk about the contradiction, for example, we could talk about how women, like, if you go back to polygamy, how women only you can only marry one guy, but yeah. you can marry more than one. But if you talk about the feminism side, they still like how much they and to still had a choice if they want to stay with their husband, even though they left him. So there's. Both sides of the middle. Yeah, do we see that? Again, another conflict in regards to polygamy suggesting that um, a man can marry up to four women, okay, and that the woman really has no say in this, okay. However, through education, once again, through ironically French rule, we often see imperialism as dictating much more limits on a society because of French imperialism that actually allows this education and freedom given to women. And then Aisha too and um, Tulaye then have a choice to continue to follow in their Islamic traditions or not. Okay, yes. Already, we talked about it yesterday. Like, maybe have up to four wives, and they weren't allowed to leave. And that's just how it was. Yes. Okay. Yes, you want. Yes, is like cultural, but like wasn't polygamy based on religion? Yes, so you like, said that. Yeah. Based so like, Islam, I feel right? like I feel like the society itself is moving on and becoming more independent and more feminism. If you want feminist, if you want, but the religion is still there, contradicting. So I feel like that's a contradiction. Yes. The and religion. can you think of characters that are like moving on and kind of... I said to I said to who else? Yeah. Her daughters. Yes. Yeah. Her daughters Dabba, are, right? are smoking. Oh, yeah, she's like, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Look at the, the change in, t in terms of old society versus new society. The girls are like smoking. And even her mom, Madame Tulaye, who's kind of like stuck in the middle. She doesn't do She doesn't like that. She's like, what are you doing? You're dirtying your mouth. Like okay. putting a cigarette in your mouth is dirtying that mouth. But then she doesn't I, like that. But then again, she doesn't do anything. Exactly. You're right. And her daughter gets pregnant. Yes. And then her daughter gets pregnant. That's like a huge thing. Wait, like which one? Which sex one? before marriage. Oh my god. That in Islam it's, it's like religion. Oh, it's like engagement, right? You have to get engaged before you get married. And that was a huge thing as well. And yet, Ramatulaye becomes perhaps progressive. You could argue that she becomes progressive by accepting her daughter's condition and not rejecting her. Okay? And growing with it. Okay? Yeah, keep going. But just, I just have a question. How did her neighbor, like, it was her neighbor, she called that she was pregnant, right? Like, she tried to use so. Is it that her neighbor is. I don't want to say more modernized, but or is like how how can she tell these things? She's a witch. No, I think she's more. She's like, yeah, she's like a fortune teller kind of. What? Super she just threw things on the ground. It's like it keeps doing that, and she's pregnant. What? Straight yeah. up, she's like the daughter's pregnant. Yeah. Which is again kind of interesting because she is a woman woman re very representative of old society, right? Yeah, she's old society. Yeah, she's not she's like the old, like right? Being like, like a is witch is yeah. against this Islamic views. It's not a witch, but... No, I know, but like that type of thing is, is not supposed to... Like any magical force or anything is against... Because 
They say you would have a demon in you when you do that. No. I don't have demons. Okay, remember. Maybe that's Christianism, but I, I know that people that read other people's like palms or something, it's considered as the devil's. That's Christianity. Yeah, it's not the same as that. Catholicism is very yeah, but We're not allowed to have religion. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't yeah. put yeah. in speech yeah. tonight. Yeah. Christian. Like Christian. Christian. So I don't know what Muslims are going to I don't know specifically about Muslims, but the issue is, is remember, we have cultural um, influences as well, right? So yes, we have um, like the Islamic merchants and tradesmen moving in and changing the makeup of the country, but at the same time, remember, the makeup of the country already has African traditions steeped in their in their people already. Correct? Which daughter gets pregnant? The second one. I said to Yes. Oh, that's why. Okay. okay. We also look at think about Daba and Abu, their marriage. Like what what does Daba say about marriage overall? What does Abu say about marriage overall? It's a very different concept of what marriage is to Amatulaye. Doesn't wait, doesn't Amatulaye say that like she can leave that? Doesn't Muhammad Tulaye say, say it a little louder? I don't know. She says like you can leave him if things don't work out. She doesn't say that. She says that. Daba. Oh, actually. Yeah. That. She oh. says like, oh, Diego. If he's unhappy, you can leave. Or if I'm unhappy, I can leave. Um, like, what difference does it make if I'm the one that yeah. leaves first? Yes. Yeah. It's a very progressive idea, right? It's like something that we, I would argue, as Western society, kind of believes in. If we're unhappy in a marriage, yes, we both have the right to leave. Okay, so that those are huge, like con, uh, conflicts. I would argue in the book that become much more profound, and our understanding of the conflicts become much more profound through our understanding of the history of Senegal. Good. Yeah. Now, do we see our connection? I just found this so complicated. It's I absolutely so agree. History. I absolutely agree. It is quite complicated, and it's hard to like. Summarize a country's history in you know 15 minutes. I absolutely agree. But we're only getting snippets, right? We're only getting snippets. And if, for instance, this becomes a topic of interest for a written assignment, okay, then people are absolutely allowed to deepen their research and um, find out more stuff to connect and build upon their. What's the written assignment? The supervisor, right? Supervised writing first and then written assignment is your essay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah.